Welcome to the first video in this short series I'm doing where I'm talking about some of the common mistakes I see writers make in the different acts of their screenplays. These are mistakes I've seen made in both professional and amateur screenplays. Talking about what not to do can sometimes be just as helpful as talking about what to do, and it can give you a different perspective when you're going into your story to rewrite. Now I will make a quick disclaimer and say that not every story is going to work the exact same way. So when I'm talking about the first act, I'm talking about the first 30 pages or so of your screenplay where the story is getting set up and everything is put in place for the rest of the story. My hope is that some of these mistakes will apply to you and you can use this video to fix some of the mistakes in your screenplay. Mistake number one, the story has no conflict before the inciting incident. Sometimes writers mistake the setup of their story to mean that this part should have no conflict. Sometimes they think that because the main force of antagonism hasn't entered the story, that there should really not be any conflict in the story. And this simply isn't true. The inciting incident of your story will move your character into their unfamiliar situation or adventure world or whatever you want to call it, but the setup will still have conflict. This conflict happens before the story really kicks into gear and shows us a lot about who the character is and what they're dealing with when we meet them. It may show us what they're afraid of or what they're trying to hide or beliefs that they will have to deal with as they go through the story. Let's look at some examples of conflict that occur before the inciting incident takes place. In Sicario, Kate is an FBI agent who is trying to take down the cartel. Kate raids a house in Arizona. She and her team find bodies in the house and accidentally set off a bomb. This is Kate's world. The real story conflict hasn't started yet, but we are learning about Kate. We understand that she is hunting a dangerous enemy that is leaking into America. The inciting incident comes around 10 minutes into the story, when she is called to be a part of a special task force that is supposedly working in El Paso. When Kate agrees to join this task force, she begins her journey into the moral struggle of the story between herself, Matt, and Alejandro. In Inglorious Bastards, the story starts with a tense, explosive scene that sets the tone for the film. This large moment of conflict is essentially backstory for the film's main story, the assassination of Hitler and other high-ranking Nazis by Shoshana. Even though this scene is obviously full of conflict, this is still set up because it is establishing the relationship between Shoshana and Hans Landa. The inciting incident comes later when Frederick Zoller meets Shoshana. Now this film is a little more complex in its structure because it also follows the bastards, but by focusing on Shoshana as the main protagonist of the story, this structure becomes clear. Some stories jump right into the center of the main conflict, or the main conflict begins as we learn about the main characters. In Zodiac, we meet our main characters as the Zodiac is murdering his victims. Actually, all of the Zodiac murders take place in the first 30 minutes of the film, so we actually meet and learn about our main characters as they are learning about the murders. We don't see them before the murders because we don't really need to. Everything we need to know about them, we learn as they try to find the Zodiac Killer. And so the story begins with the film's major problem starting immediately. While there are obviously different ways to start your story and learn about your characters, the point is to not let your story be set up without conflict. Conflict allows us to learn about the characters before they are deep into the story. And we learn about characters when we see how they live and how they react to the daily conflict in their lives. It allows us to understand what they want and what they believe before the story really kicks into gear. Mistake number two. The story doesn't set up the genre. Now this applies more particularly to stories that fit squarely into a genre, like action, thriller, comedy, mystery, etc. Some stories forget to clue the audience in on what type of story they're watching. Let me explain what I mean. Sometimes I get halfway through a screenplay and then something really unexpected happens, like a comedic turn out of nowhere, or crazy sci-fi elements, or somebody dies. Essentially, something happens that doesn't feel in line with the script that I've read thus far. This happens because the genre of the story isn't set up in the beginning. To keep the audience engaged in the story, it's important to clue them in on the genre of the story they're watching. 
Now there's a difference between surprising your audience in a way that fits in the story and surprising your audience in a way that pulls them out of the story because they don't believe what they're watching. If your audience is able to stay engaged through the different shifts in tone in your story, then great. But if your audience is taken out by a surprise or a shift in tone, then you may need to rework the beginning of your story to better prepare them for what comes later. Get Out is a great example of cluing the audience in on what kind of story they will be watching. The opening scene shows us a black man walking down the street at night, and then he gets kidnapped as a creepy song plays from the kidnapper's car. Then, as we meet our protagonist, we have a clear sense of the kind of danger he is in and the story that we are about to witness. Now imagine if you knew nothing about Get Out and this first scene didn't exist. You could go the entire first act being unsure of the genre or tone of the film. The first scene primes the audience and gets them into the correct headspace so that they are not taken out of the story later on. It also engages the audience throughout the first act because they know something is coming, even if everything seems alright so far. Mistake number three. The story has unnecessary or overly long dumps of expository information. This usually happens with stories that have a large concept that needs to be explained. It's important to understand why this happens though, because many new writers make the opposite mistake and simply don't give us the information we need at all. It's better to exposition dump than to leave your audience confused, because if the audience is confused, then they will have no reason to care or engage in the story that they are watching. But obviously, you still don't want the audience noticing when you have to give a lot of exposition. A great example of correctly giving exposition is in The Matrix. The Matrix is a sci-fi heavy story that gives no exposition in the very beginning. We learn about The Matrix with Neo starting here, where Morpheus sends Neo tumbling down the rabbit hole. This scene and the ones that follow are essentially just a ton of exposition, but it works because this all has an emotional and philosophical weight to Neo, and by extension, the audience. Neo's beliefs about the world have been shattered. He struggles to put the pieces back together and become who he must become. When there is emotional and philosophical weight attached to the exposition, the audience won't notice it as simply information. Too many stories try to give you a lot of initial exposition without actually giving you any deeper reason to care. And so if you need to give a lot of exposition, find a way to make that exposition impactful to the specific characters in your story. If you can do that, then you can help the audience through these otherwise boring moments of information. Mistake number four. The character or characters have no clear want or reason for wanting it. This may seem obvious, but in the thick of writing a screenplay, the wants of the characters may become unclear. I know this may seem too simple, but I want to make it clear. In a narrative drama, a character's want and reason for wanting it will be the drive of your story. Without this, your story will constantly spin its wheels and go nowhere. Once you have this, you can build the other characters and the antagonist around this idea. I've struggled with this in my own writing. Sometimes I get lost in a concept and I forget to give my characters clear wants and direction. Or sometimes I start out with a clear want, but then I begin to lose it over the course of the story. Basically all good dramatic narratives establish the main character's want as quickly as possible because it will drive the rest of the story. Frodo wants to take the ring to Mordor, Kate wants to stop the cartel, the characters in Zodiac want to catch the Zodiac. Yes, you can have a story where the character doesn't want anything for the whole story, but it's very difficult to build a compelling narrative drama without a character who wants something. When rewriting, it can be important to review your early drafts with this in mind, and simply ask yourself, what does my character want? And what do all of my characters want? When you can grasp this, you can begin to see what characters are important for your story and what characters are not. Storytelling is less about learning a hundred complex concepts and more about practicing a few core ideas over and over again until you can implement them naturally into your stories. Mistake number five, the story has no meaning. Characters go through the motions and beat the antagonist, but there's no real depth or meaning. One of the things that makes a great story is that the story has meaning that transcends the story and can apply to the audience's lives or raise questions in the audience's minds. 
Stories without meaning can be entertaining, but quickly forgettable. It's much better to be both entertaining and deeply meaningful, which creates a memorable story. In Sicario, Kate wants to take down the cartel, but she also believes in the rule of law and in the justice system. She believes that the good guys should conduct themselves within the confines of the law. These beliefs are challenged by Matt and Alejandro. As Kate, Matt, and Alejandro go after the cartel, Kate isn't simply facing external obstacles. Her beliefs are being challenged every time Matt and Alejandro use illegal methods to get to the cartel leaders. When trying to create meaning in your story, ask yourselves what do the characters believe and how their beliefs will be challenged over the course of the story. It isn't just goals and obstacles that keep an audience engaged. It's the philosophical ramifications each time a character is challenged. When your characters win or lose, what does it say about the world and about what the characters believe? It can be important to think about your story in the sense of avoiding mistakes rather than always focusing on doing everything correctly. Hopefully being aware of these mistakes can help you figure out why your story isn't working and set it on the right track so that you can tell the story that you want to tell. Let me review the mistakes one more time. Mistake number one, the story has no conflict before the inciting incident. Mistake number two, the story doesn't set up the genre. Mistake number three, the story has unnecessary or overly long dumps of expository information. Mistake number four, the character or characters have no clear want or reason for wanting it. And mistake number five, the story has no meaning. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos of me teaching screenwriting, then I recommend you check out the Guide to Screenwriting playlist. And if you want to move away from story theory that you've heard a million times and focus on the most practical elements of screenwriting, then I recommend heading over to practicalscreenwriting.com and checking out the Practical Screenwriting course. Use code YouTube for $50 off. Thanks for watching.